Hi, y'all. It's been a very interesting month to watch the gun control discussion happen, and I have a little story about a conversation I was in this week with a scientist named Carolyn Porco. Uh, and I was in a conversation with um, a criminologist and a ma another mathematician uh, who packed up his bags and went home, and Carolyn Porco wound up blocking me. Now, she put out a tweet um, the other day saying that she's always happy to help people uh, work in a way to not mislead the public. She doesn't want people to be misled about the truth of the world. This is an outright lie on Carolyn Porco's part, which I will now prove by our discussion on gun control. So uh, she put out two tweets back to back. Uh, the first was a lie about uh, a law, and the other was a lie about some statistics. So the first one was about the so-called Dickey Amendment, the gun control narrative, the gun control side's proposition that there exists some law somewhere uh, written in the 1990s that prohibits the CDC from uh, studying gun violence. No such law has ever existed. Now that was the first tweet on the subject she put out, and then the next tweet uh, she put out, not just the next tweet on that subject, but the very next tweet she put out was uh, the word astonishing, linking, linking to a news story claiming that the number of people killed in car accidents exceeds now the number of people being killed by firearms. Now, uh, incidentally, in the little link uh, to the article, it said, you know, CDC study shows. So I put it to you, Carolyn, uh, your ideological blinders have uh, hoodwinked you. It's not possible for you to not suffer cognitive dissonance without a great deal of indoctrination by, by noting, uh, uh, on the one hand, one, the CDC may not study gun violence, and two, here's a study the CDC published on gun violence. Uh, the in, your inability to notice that uh, bespeaks to your, uh, the depths to which you are invested in your ideology. So I went and clicked on the news article, and it, it reads, uh, according to the most recent statistics from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more people now die from firearms than motor vehicle accidents. So uh, she retweeted that uh, with the uh, the claim that it's astonishing. And I said, yes, it is astonishing. And the most astonishing part about it is the fact that it is just false. Let me be clear here. Since motor vehicles like became very commonplace, there have been zero years, uh, excepting World War II, where uh, gun deaths have exceeded motor vehicle deaths. There are no such years uh, to include the year in question here, which I think was 2015, 2016, to include 2017, 2007, uh, and 2018. There are zero years in which firearms have thinned the herd more than motor vehicles uh, since motor vehicles became common, except for during World War II. That's right, folks. In order to get the, the uh, gun deaths to exceed the motor vehicle deaths, you have to have a full-scale world war happening. Otherwise, it doesn't happen in this country, and it does not happen worldwide, period. So... Um, there are a number of ways that you can lie. I mentioned this uh, having worked for the government. Uh, you can lie. Uh, people can come in and lie outright. Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, you can confabulate some really fantastical story that no one can believe, so it's very obvious. Not the usual way people lie, but it, uh, it does happen. Uh, then there are damned lies, uh, which is the ones I was just talking about, the ones that are just so spectacularly obvious and bad and terrible and big that you notice them right away. And then there is you uh, use statistics, which is to say that you lie with the truth by shuffling data around. The CDC is exceedingly good at this and indeed it, it's just like any, it's not really an industry but it kind of is. It's government but it's not really industry because its, its goal isn't to make money. But it's very common in an uh, in industry to find clever ways to say something that is true that will make people believe something that is categorically false. And if you don't think that is the case, that there's a whole industry devoted to just this kind of uh, way of lying, go look at the food industry and how they label things. They have like 60 to 70 uh, synonyms for the word sugar that they'll use to describe the, what's in their products. And they'll have on the front something like, say, like a no sugar added. Okay. And then when you read the list of ingredients, there are sugars, but you know they haven't been added. They're just there already. And they'll be uh, spoken about in, in some of the way, like a high fructose corn syrup and some really obscure Latinate names that, uh, unless you have a dictionary, a technical dictionary around with you, you're not going to know the name of. And so people think that, oh yeah, this is pretty healthy. The fruit juice that you get on the off the shelf, uh, the store market, the store shelf, has the same amount of sugar as the soft drink. So uh, don't torture your kids with shitty uh, grapefruit juice they don't want. Get them the Coca-Cola, same sugar content. The one is not healthier than the other. It's a complete lie. 
Uh, very clever advertising has helped bring that about. So anyway, the uh, news article that Carolyn Porco is so astonished by links to um, a fact sheet, a fast fact sheet from the CDC, which reads um, as follows. All injury deaths, and then it gives the numbers, all poisoning deaths, and then it gives the numbers, all firearm deaths, and then it gives the numbers, and motor vehicle traffic deaths. Does anybody spot something that's missing in that one that's present in all the others? It's the word all for the slow among you, like Carolyn Porco, a scientist whose interest in the data extends no further than the particular project in which she's interested in everything else is fair game to be misrepresented. I will substantiate that a little bit later. Okay, so it's very important when you're dealing with data that's being presented to you, particularly from the CDC or any industry, uh, people who have a vested interest of some type in whatever they're talking about, um, that you pay very careful attention to the words that they use to describe something uh, and how that differs from how they describe anything else. Because if there's a difference in the description, uh, in the words that are used to describe the one thing and the other thing, there's a reason for that difference. It's not a Scrivener's error. They aren't talking off the cuff. These reports uh, take about a year to prepare. A lot of thought goes into it, and they're very particular about what it is they're saying, which means they're very particular about what it is they're not saying to you. So it says motor vehicle traffic deaths. Now, relying on the well-known principle of the whispers game, that gets transmo uh, transmo uh, transmogrified in the news article to... Um, let me read it uh, explicitly so that I don't miss, miss, uh, so I don't screw it up like they did. Of uh, motor vehicle accidents, um, traffic deaths and motor vehicle accidents, vehicle traffic deaths and vehicle accidents are not the same thing. You are being given a subset here, a proper subset here. So uh, this and it says number of deaths: thirty-six thousand one hundred sixty-one, and then from all firearm deaths, thirty-six thousand two fifty-two. So after having cherry-picked what they're going to present and choosing what they're going to not present, they've managed to get a difference of about 100. Ooh. So this number, this 36,161, comes from Table uh, 11, which, uh, which is titled Number of Deaths, Death Rates, and Age-Adjusted Death Rates for Injury Deaths by Mechanism of Injury Death and Leading Cause of Injury Death, United States 2015, and then it has a motor vehicle traffic, which, by that, they mean exactly what you think of when you think of traffic. They don't mean people who, they don't mean the mother who's backing up her car and crushed one of her kids to death. They don't mean a person who's out in the ATV out in the woods somewhere, which is a motor vehicle, and, you know, whacks himself with a tree or whatever and gets killed. They literally mean people who were driving in traffic on a road. Just like what you think about when you think of traffic. You don't think, oh, traffic, what's going on in my driveway or in the woods? They mean the public roadways and the adjacent uh, structures. So that's 36,161. Well, if you go look at Table 6, this took all of about 35 seconds of my life to figure out. You'll see that here it lists number of deaths from selected causes by age, United States, 2015, and then when you look at the total, it says motor vehicle accidents, which is a different thing than traffic deaths, and it says 37,757. So already, in just 35 seconds, I've shown that the article is uh, at least mis is, is is at least false, and I'm going to claim that it's knowingly false because the media know precisely that this kind of uh, shuffling of data gets done, and it gets done by the C CDC extremely regularly. Uh, I'll give you the the best case example of it. The uh, CDC puts out every year, you know, the top 10, 15, 20, whatever it is, uh, leading causes of death in the United States, and in zero years do they ever put the actual leading causes of death in the United States. They always omit one, and it is one of the deadliest. In fact, it's the third or sec second or third deadliest uh, thing in the United States. Medical care itself, that never makes it on the list. And if you go read through other tables, you're not going to find a list that says medical care, uh, 200 to 400,000, depending on the year, people who are killed by their doctors or by the medical industry. That's a conflict of interest. Their goal is to promote people to go to hospitals, to go see doctors, to go see medical care professionals. And they think, they're so arrogant to think that only they are good enough to present with the right kind of information, that they bury those 200 to 400,000 corpses per year by shuffling around how they particularize the data, how they aggregate it and how they disaggregate it. So let's go back to 1996 and the so-called Dickey Amendment, which um, I will read in full, if I have it. I do. Now, this is what the uh, gun control advocates claim is a ban 
on CDC research into gun violence. Uh, oh, here, all right, so this is going to be very long. It's going to take several hundred hours. It's from Public Law 104 208, uh, Volume 110 Statutes, uh, 3009, page 244. It's going to take hours for you, for you to listen to it, so be sit down, uh, provided that in addition to the amounts provided herein, up to $48,400,000 shall be available from amounts available under Section 241 of the Public Health Service Act to carry out the National Center for Health Statistics surveys, provided further that none of the funds made available for injury prevention and control at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention may be used to advocate or promote gun control. All right. Sorry if that took too long. It takes a very uh, dedicated kind of liar to claim that that language prevents the CDC from studying gun violence. All it does is say it is not legal for you to for funds to be appropriated to conduct research to then be misappropriated to do political advocacy. The CDC, in 100% of the years that they've published their statistics since this, uh, b this bill was made law, has in fact done studies on gun violence. In fact, the, the reports they publish every year that have gun deaths by type and everything, that's money being spent on gun violence research. And it doesn't come with any advocacy. And so the claims of, in the CDC at the time that you know, the language is ambiguous and it scared a lot of people, it, it's complete bullshit. The reason that the CDC uh, you know, decided to take the tack that it did is because it only wants to do research if and only if, in addition to that research, it gets to drive the narrative. It gets to lobby for what the laws should be, what the people should not be allowed to have. And the researchers of the, of the day said, well, if we can't uh, have, uh, you know, put our stake, if we can't take the taxpayers' dollars from them and use that to lobby against their constitutional rights, we are completely not interested in this subject other than just, you know, the bare minimum that uh, we have to do in order to make it look like we're, we're still being competent and professional. So whenever uh, the CDC has a view of matters, it will, it will skew the statistics like with the healthcare thing. They think going to the doctor is a good idea, which it is. Generally, it's a good idea. Nevertheless, there's a, there are those 200 to 400,000 dead bodies every year that you just can't do away with that they, uh, they obscure by particularizing it and, and sprinkling them, dispersing them through these many, 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 many tables of data, which you have to go reconstruct. And that's why it's only an estimate that's 200 to 400,000, because the raw data is uh, really hard to get. The CDC has it. Um, and even that gets categorized in different ways. But it, it's just hard. You really need to have a good budget to go do the same counting that the CDC uh, does. In fact, you need to have about the same budget as the, as the CDC if you really want to go do it. That's dedicated to these kinds of projects, which most not-for-profits uh, can't raise. Anyway... So that's the claim, that if we can't lobby to do research on you know, some aspect of a problem, we don't have any interest in that, in that aspect of the problem, because we are purveyors of truth, and we just want to give to the American people information for them to make up their own minds. Um, and you know, that's why they do it. So the problem is this. In, every, in any given year, there is a finite number of people who drop dead from all different causes. We have uh, the total count of corpses of which we're aware, and then there will be some corpses that haven't yet been found, either because they were murdered and they've been hidden, or they've been in accidents in remote places and they haven't been stumbled upon yet, uh, or they were out swimming or something, got swept out to sea, or they've been eaten by an animal. So you have some, it is an underreport, because there are some dead bodies that haven't been found. But unlike other statistics, like with, say, rape statistics, we don't have a, we don't have a reservoir of fake claims that we have to factor in uh, whose true value we don't know. There aren't any any people who we think are dead, who are you know, any corpses who are presented to us who we think are dead, who are not now actually dead. Because I assure you, if um, if after the t amount of time it takes from when the report is filed to when it's finalized, if the person wasn't dead at the beginning of it and they haven't been discovered alive, they're definitely dead now because they've either been cremated, autopsied and buried, or something. They are certainly dead now, even if they weren't when they were pretending earlier. So that only leaves one category uh, of corpse of dead of dead people left over and that is the people who have been declared legally dead absent a body but we know exactly how many of those uh, those cases have happened because they are public records they are done in courts and they are declared by a judge and uh, you can count all of them so there are no uh, over report there's no over reporting problem there's only an under reporting problem so at a minimum we have a number of corpses per year you can't do away with them uh, because there is that pile of dead bodies, uh, like it or not, 
Now you have to categorize it. That's where the CDC comes in. So the reason that in this list it's uh, all firearm deaths, all poisoning deaths, all injury deaths, and then only motor vehicle traffic deaths is because they expect that people will read this and they'll be pitting firearm deaths, all firearm deaths, against just this one subset of motor vehicle deaths, which they will in their mind in the future remember as being uh, all the people who have been killed from cars, which is not the case. Now, I pointed out a difference of about 1,500 that I found in 35 or 40 seconds or whatever it was. What I can tell you is that there are at least five, uh, 50,000 additional corpses that aren't uh, in this because they too have been sprinkled throughout the different tables and categorized more particularly to avoid the obvious uh, cause of their actual death, which emanates directly from automobiles, or motor vehicles, I should say. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Good research project for you people out there, but I assure you that there are about 50,000 additional corpses not covered in this data. So even if zero people were killed in traffic crashes, you would still have many more people killed by cars than are killed by firearms every year. If you put it all together, it's going to be something like 85, uh, yeah, uh, 85 to 90,000 dead from cars, motor vehicles of all types, and uh, only 36 to 52 from firearms of all types. Now, if you wanted to compare like with like here, uh, because one was dealing with just all unintentional injuries from motor vehicles, and the other was dealing specifically with traffic crashes or whatever, it would be firearm injury deaths, or act unintentional injury deaths against uh, motor vehicle unintentional injury deaths, which that'd be about 500 to 30 whatever thousand. Of course, on the intentional one, that would shift back towards the uh, the firearms, because not a lot of people choose as their murder weapon a murder vehicle, but some do. And here's an interesting distinction. Um, and, and there are legitimate ambiguities in how you would go about categorizing things. For example, if you beat someone to death with a rifle, is that a blunt injury death or is that a firearm death? Well, it's both. A firearm was in fact used uh, as the instrument to kill someone, but it wasn't used in a conventional way. It wasn't, the person wasn't shot. And it did, in fact, result in that person's death. So a firearm was used in that death. Now, some statisticians uh, may say it doesn't count because it's not the function of a firearm. It's not to be used as a bat. We'll just count that as blunt force. Uh, one who wants to, wants to paint a, a more whole picture of what's going on will say it's both. But we need to remember in the final count not to double count to that one dead person. Um, there are people. There's uh, such a crime as vehicular homicide. And then there's homicide where the instrument, I'm sorry, there's murder, and where the instrument is the motor vehicle itself. And the difference between the two is vehicular homicide is a type of negligent homicide. You're driving down the street and you get in a car crash and you cause someone's death. You're driving drunk, you ran a red light, uh, whatever it is. Uh, you did something that caused a car crash. You didn't set out to do it. It's just one of those things that happens when cars, are, you know, when objects are moving quick and people are trying to discover the laws of physics in real time. And uh, it's unfortunate. We can't say that something bad didn't go wrong. But we're not going to say that you're a murderer, you're a homicider, a vehicular homicider. <clears throat> and then there are people who choose as their murder weapon um, a murder vehicle in the same way you might choose a knife, and they set out to do it. And those will be charged differently. Whether those crimes will appear in these data, the two the tables that I read now, I don't think so. I think these are only dealing with uh, accidental. I don't think it's dealing with things on purpose. So uh, not included in, in those would be the accidents of uh, in one of those of the accident of which I spoke, where the mother backs over her daughter or whatever, where a person intentionally runs someone down in a parking lot or in a back alley or whatever, that may not be counted. This is just dealing with accidents in the way that you think of accidents, not homicides, not murders in the way that you think of murders. So uh, there is is that. Now on to my claims about Carolyn Porco being a liar, not simply that she was misled. Originally, I can go with. The, with that she's just misled, she's a careless reader, she's, she's exactly what the gun control narrative depends on. A reasonably bright person who uh, has read, who, who's read something that confirms their already established bias and won't look into it very deeply. This is how the left works generally. Uh, it makes a lot of sense right until the moment you start really paying attention to what's being claimed, what's being done, and what the logical consequences of the arguments actually are. And then you go, well, actually, this isn't quite so sensible after all. It feels good, but it doesn't think too well. Anyway, so uh, I made uh, the correction on the Dickey Amendment claims that she had retweeted, and she tried to ask the guy who linked to the article if what I said was correct, but she made a typo. Instead of at putting an at symbol, she put a dot, and then his... Twitter uh, name, so he didn't respond to her as far as I know. 
But I responded back by saying, yes, I actually am quite correct. Here's the legal citation to the statute at issue. Here is a picture of the actual paragraph where it's found. I've underlined the important things for you. That's what they're claiming prevents them from doing research at all. It doesn't prevent them from doing research. It prevents them only from diverting research funds into lobbying. It, it does not allow them to go advertise or promote gun control policies. They are free. There's what was that, 50 million, I don't remember what it was. An ungodly number of millions of dollars that they have at their disposal that they can use to spend on doing statistics and surveys on gun violence, if they wish. But because they can't divert some of that money, steal some of that money, and use it for other purposes, they're not interested in doing a comprehensive study. So anyway, uh, so I give her that. I also go through, I show her table 6 and table 11 and say, see the difference? Uh, when, you, you, when you start taking away from the, uh, the superset, the proper subsets that you don't want to count, it's very easy to massage the data, to cream it, to say what you want it to say, which is precisely what they have done. Your uh, journalists are repeating this um, without, well, I will be charitable and say they're not looking at the actual data, even though I'm pretty sure they're looking at the actual data. They've just decided, yeah, the actual data doesn't favor us, so we're going to pretend it away and just go with the narrative that we prefer because it's, you know, lots of fake news out there. But anyway, so her response as a scientist was, oh my God, thank you. I am so happy that you brought this to my attention because I would hate to mislead people about the truth. That was her reaction, right? <laughs> no, of course it wasn't. It was that I'm dissembling. I'm, I'm lying by showing her. I didn't just tell her. I screen capped the actual tables from the CDC side by side, you know, highlighting the important, the relevant bits and saying, see, different numbers. The data are being cooked. Uh, but anyway, so uh, she thinks for a while, and thinks for a while, and thinks for a while, and then uh, said, well, you know, it's the data is really, uh, it, it's irrelevant. It's immaterial. Blocked. I'm like, really? That's a, a bit of a strange turn uh, from a person who the other day thought the data was terribly important. In fact, it was astonishing that it's true that this uh, this reality is going on in the world. Finding out that it's not astonishing and not true, she says, oh, these bare facts, these, these mere data don't matter at all. And uh, now that could just be she doesn't like my tone or something, so I wouldn't call her a liar on that alone. But what I did do is, even though she blocked me, I went incognito and looked, and she is still promoting the same two narratives. After having been proved categorically false, having, been, having had it proved to her in hard data and black letter law, that the claims are absolutely, incontrovertibly false, she is nevertheless still promoting those two stories. That's the difference between a person who is wrong and embarrassed about being wrong and wanting to run away from it, but nevertheless, you know, correcting their error, and just a liar. She, uh, she won't concede, well, she conceded that there was an error, but, you know, it's, it's dissembling to point out this, these real data. It's dishonest to point out the true facts. Uh, she blocks me, so I can't, you know, correct her anymore when she makes these claims in the, in the future, if she decides to go do that some more. And she still leaves intact the original false claims without edit. She didn't do an errata, she didn't take them down, nothing. They are still there uh, for all the world to see, being promoted by her many thousands of followers as a prominent scientist. She's, she's quite dishonest. Uh, she's just another one of those embarrassing scientists who, in the very narrow sliver of science in which they're trained, uh, uh, are, are competent, but once you get, like, you know, a cunt's hair away from that, completely uninterested in what's true and willing to lie about anything that feels good to them, uh, you know, at the end of the day. And that is Carolyn Porco. I won't remember her as a great scientist. I'll remember her as a, a liar who occasionally happened to do some reasonably good science. Have a great day.